Coming up on Torrance today, reported coyote sightings hit a record high. Find out why and what we can do to help. City Cable teams up with the Social Services Commission at the Torrance Certified Farmers Market on upcoming events that celebrate our veterans. And a retired educator shares his mission to help kids around the world one pair of shoes at a time. All this and more coming up right now on Torrance Today. Welcome to Torrance Today. I'm Christine Lee. It's 4 p.m. on Wednesday, October 12th. I hope you're having a great week so far. Thank you so much for joining us. Here's our first story. Another teenager has died from a possible fentanyl overdose. She was from Fullerton and her family says she was just 17 years old. The girl died a day and a half after being rushed to the hospital less than two weeks ago. Torrance police have been warning us about the dangers of fentanyl, especially those sold online and through popular social media platforms. More than 60 drug-related deaths took place in our city over the past four years, including seven this year alone. Narcotics experts from from TPD are educating faculty, staff, and parents at Torrance schools about the dangers of fentanyl through webinars. The police department also has a free resource guide informing our community about the dangers of opioids. You can grab a copy by going to torrancecagovernor slash opioid awareness. The city received a record number of reported coyote sightings last week and urged residents to stay cautious. The Community Services Department had 28 reported coyote sightings, the highest number since they took over the coyote management program from the Torrance Police Department more than two years ago. Three cats were also killed last week and they were likely to have been feral. Officials say a big reason why there may be so many coyote sightings right now is because many people are leaving food out, attracting the animals. Here are some easy and important tips to remember. Do not leave food out. That means pet food, even trash that animals can easily access. Also, intimidate the coyotes when you see them by throwing objects near them, wetting them with water, or scaring them off in some other way. Officials say the last thing you want to do is be quiet and avoid them because that will encourage the coyotes not to be afraid of humans. And let people know, especially neighbors, when you're out on a walk. I actually had my neighbor tell me that she saw two coyotes when I was walking my dog last week, and I was really grateful for that. As always, please call our 24-hour coyote hotline if you see a coyote. That number is 310-618-3898. The city's financial status is getting stronger since the thick of the pandemic. Torrance moved into the moderate risk designation in the California State Auditor's annual high-risk city rankings released yesterday. The city improved its score from last year by 10 points, scoring 42.5 out of 100 possible points. The annual report includes 10 metrics to measure local government's financial stability, including factors such as long-term debt burden, pension obligations, and general fund reserve. City leaders have proactively taken several measures to create efficiencies, cut costs, and generate more revenue. And Torrance voters passed Measure SST, increasing sales tax by a half cent to 10 percent, which is essentially 50 cents per every $100 purchase and expected to generate upwards of $18 million per year. City Manager Aram Shaparian says the city will continue to build up its reserves and pay down pension obligations. He believes these strategic efforts will improve our financial standings even more next year to keep Torrance moving forward. The Torrance City Council met last night to conduct city business. A number of proclamations were read declaring October as National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, National Arts and Humanities Month, Cyber Security Awareness Month, and Italian American Heritage Month. Council members also approved the examination to fill the fire chief position on a promotional basis, and they voted 7-0 to not renew the city's membership with the League of California Cities 
when it expires. You can catch replays of the entire City Council meeting here on our channel, online, and on the City's YouTube and Facebook platforms. The South Bay Workforce Investment Board presented its quarterly update to the mayor and council last night. The community got to learn just how many adults and students received much needed resources through its various programs. El Camino College, we've got a great partnership with them right now where we are enrolling some of their students in their machinist program into a pre-apprenticeship. And then we work with Northrop and those students get hired by Northrop and we also enroll them into an apprenticeship program. So they start off as pre-apprentices and end up with jobs at Northrop. We've done a lot of work with uh, youth and adults and enrolled them in various workforce programs. And at our one-stop center in downtown Torrance, we've uh, seen 13,000 people come through our doors. The South Bay Investment Board will celebrate its 27th annual award ceremony on Thursday, November 3rd to congratulate and award some of its participants who have successfully made it through various programs, got the training they needed, and found employment. We're told a handful of them are either Torrance residents or found work in Torrance. The event will also acknowledge and thank the many business and community partners who provide the training and other types of support. Council members also declared November 6th through the 12th as Military Veterans Appreciation Week. City Cable has been behind the scenes preparing a special program that you can watch during that week. Part of that program includes you, our community members. I really do appreciate all the, the sacrifices that the veterans have made for our country. Uh, it's meant a lot to me. I never served it and I was uh, kind of sorry I never did. I realize that they get to learn so much. And I'm really grateful for all the stuff they've done for us uh, to make it better for us living in the United States. What greater gift than for someone to sacrifice their life for others? There was a time when we drafted Americans, but they stepped up and they went and they served their country. And so I just want to say thank you. I am a veteran and uh, I didn't choose to be one, but that was part of God's plan for me. So. I served for several years and it was a great experience. I think I'm a better person because of it. And I hope that the veterans that are out there, although they may be going through challenges in life, will not uh, take lightly uh, the experience they had and uh, work through all the challenges they're facing because I appreciate them. I did not have to uh, shoot at the enemy or put my life in danger, but I was in Vietnam. And I appreciate those men and women who did that and many who did not come back. These are just a few faces we met yesterday at the Torrance Certified Farmers Market. Many more drop by to share their stories on camera and on paper. You can share your messages too. Just email us at torrancetoday at torrancca.gov. We're looking forward to featuring all of our special greetings on our virtual celebration for Veterans Week. You can watch it on Torrance City Cable, online, or on our city's Facebook and YouTube pages starting November 6th. And also, it's not too late to sign up for an in-person Veterans Appreciation Lunch and Resource Fair. The free program is for veterans and a guest and takes place on Friday, October 21st. You must RSVP by this Friday, October 14th. Just call 3 610-618-5880 or email social services commission at torrentca.gov. Among the many individuals I met at the farmer's market was a retired professor and a former board member of the Torrance Unified School District. His name is Bill Blischke and he let me know about his latest effort to help as many students as he can around the world from right here in Torrance. Out of the almost 8 billion people on the planet, almost 1 billion don't have shoes or adequate footwear. And we've got closets full. I've been doing this for five or six years. I've collected about 39,000 pair. Over half of them stay in this country because of the poverty rate and homelessness and all that. And the rest go to 127 foreign countries. And in developing countries, if kids don't have shoes, they cannot go to school because they'll contract and communicate diseases from the sores in their feet. So then poverty is totally inevitable for them. So we went in rural areas and we washed these kids' feet and measured them and gave them the first new pair of shoes they'd ever had. 
to learn more about this program, visit soulsforsouls.org. And to contact Bill, our South Bay ambassador, you can either email him at wblischeke at sbcglobal.net or call him at 310-413-9975. Well, still ahead, it's Well Done Wednesday. We love when our community members have something positive to share, and we'll give you a wonderful update from a local brewery about giving back to others when we come back in 60 seconds. You quit smoking and thought, that's that. But here's the thing about lung cancer. By the time you see the symptoms, it could be too late. But now, there's a new scan that can detect lung cancer early when it's more curable. If you smoked, get scanned. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. At the end of every episode of Torrance Today, we want to share a positive story that fits the theme for the day. On this Well Done Wednesday, I want to give a shout out to our local success story, Smog City Brewing, who blossomed from a small brewery in 2013 to now having four locations across the Southland. They don't take their success for granted and say they're all about giving back through our 1% for the Planet initiative. So we actually give back to local nonprofit organizations that protect our environment and we try to keep it as close to home as possible. We always look for opportunities to not just create a space where you can come and buy a product, but a space that gives back and really helps to improve the community that we're in. This year we just had $150,000 donated. So we're super proud of it. We know that um, you know what we do here is not just about making beer, it's about giving back. I first met Lori during the pandemic when her brewery was finding creative ways to stay afloat. She and her husband, Jonathan, pivoted their marketing and other strategic efforts to not only survive, but thrive. It is so great to know that now they're in a position to spread so much kindness to others. Congratulations and cheers to Lori and Smock City. Well, that's our show for today. Let us know if you have a positive story to tell by emailing us at torrenstoday at torrentca.gov. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more news from and for our Torrance community. Have a great day.